Welcome to YouTube's finest tutorial on calendar spreads. A calendar spread option is established by simply entering a long and short position on the same underlying asset at the same strike price, but with different expiration dates. It's sometimes referred to as a horizontal spread and goes by many other names, which can make it somewhat confusing. In essence, calendar spreads all have the same foundation. However, where it gets confusing is what their goal is. A long calendar spread, often referred to as a time spread, is the buying and selling of a call option or the buying and selling of a put option with the same strike price but having different expiration months. In essence, if a trader is selling a short dated option and buying a longer dated option, the result is a net debit to the account. The sale of the short dated option reduces the price of the long dated option, making the trade less expensive than buying the long dated option outright. Because the two options expire in different months, this trade can take on many different forms as expiration months expire. It is important to remember that there are two types of long calendar spreads, call and put. There are inherent advantages to trading a put calendar over a call calendar, but both are readily acceptable trades. Whether a trader uses calls or puts depends on the sentiment of the underlying investment vehicle. If a trader is bullish, thinking a stock is going up, they would buy a calendar call spread. If a trader is bearish, thinking the stock is going down, they would buy a calendar put spread. In our calendar spread option example, we are going to simplify things. In simple terms, we'll be buying a call and selling a call for the same strike price one month apart. The front month or the one expiring quicker, we will sell, while the back month or the one expiring further into the future, we will buy. We will go over the specifics later. This all sounds confusing, but once we go over the example, things will look a lot more simple. The goal of this strategy is to profit from time and volatility, so it's pretty important for the strike price to be as near as possible to the underlying asset price. The trade takes advantage of how near and long dated options act when time and volatility change. An increase in implied volatility, all other things held the same, would have a positive impact on this strategy because longer term options are more sensitive to changes in volatility, aka Vega. The passage of time, all other things held the same, would also have a positive impact on this strategy in the beginning of the trade until the short term option expires. After that, the strategy is only a long call whose value erodes as time elapses. In general, an option's rate of time decay, theta, increases as its expiration draws nearer. So back to our example. Let's say we have Apple stock trading at $241 a share as of April 3rd, 2020. In order to begin a calendar spread, you first sell, aka write, a May 8th call for $17.15 or $1,715 for one contract with a strike price of $240. This strike price is as close as we can get to the current price of Apple, while the expiration date is right around a month away. This portion of the play is what we call the front month, but we have more work to do to set up the rest of the play. So at the same time, we buy a June 19th expiration call for $21.25 or $2,135 for one contract with a strike price of $240. Once again, we are trying to stay as close to the current price of Apple as possible, matching the strike price of the front month portion. So what we have achieved is we sold a call option that expires about one month from now, while at the same time buying a call that expires two months from now. They both have the same strike price. This move overall is going to cost us $2,135, the amount paid for the back month, minus the net credit we receive for selling the front month. This realizes into a total price of 420. So if we type in our scenario to the optionsprofitcalculator.com app, a neat site that for free will show you the profit loss scenario approaching expiration with your play, we can see that this strategy offers a relatively wide range of profit potential. Although our maximum gain is capped around 1,091, our max loss is capped as well. Remember what I said in the beginning, a calendar spread will make use of time and volatility increases in order to make money. Now using options profit calculator, it's hard to visualize IV changes and its effect on our profits and losses. But just understand that if IV were to go up, our profits would look inflated. 
This tool cannot predict future IV changes, obviously, so it will just use the current IV and project this chart using a static IV figure. However, we can visualize the effect of time. For example, if Apple were to go up to $246 a share on April 11th, we would be looking at a $78 profit, or 13.1%. But if we held an Apple turn out to be $246 a share on May 7th, right before our front month expiration date, we would be looking at a $704 profit, or 167%. As you can see, the longer you keep Apple while it remains around that $240 strike price, the more money you can make. The downside is that Apple can fly up and down and you can end up losing money. Let's say Apple suddenly goes on a tear all the way up to $400 on May 5th. This would mean your option is now worth 50% less, resulting in a $204 loss if you were to close that portion at that point. Like always, we can look at a profit loss chart to really get our points across. In our specific scenario, we are worried about four points. The maximum loss point, the break even points, and the maximum gain point. Understanding these will help you realize what is good and what is bad for our specific play. Remember, these are based on expiration on May 8th. So this is what the result will be if we close our position right before the end of the trading day on that specific date. Our maximum loss point is right around 145 a share. This is pretty unlikely. For Apple to drop this low, we would need a serious event to occur, but nonetheless, if it were to drop to 145 a share, we would suffer a maximum loss which would be $420. It's also good to mention that on the other side, if Apple were to rise to something like 320 or 350 or other absurd prices, we would most likely come close to losing just about the same amount on expiration, maybe slightly less, something like minus 350. Next, our break-even points. For us to make our money back and break even, Apple needs to expire at 277.40 or 211.50 on the other end. Below 277 and we begin to experience losses, and above 211, the same goes. Obviously, this is a sliding scale. The further away you get from breakeven, the worse the losses become until you reach max loss. Now our favorite part, the maximum return. This is where you can make the most at expiration. If Apple is at 240 at expiration, we are set to gain $1,091. You can see this with the following peak. From breakeven, the further we move in towards 240, the better our return. If you look at the graph, we can see our max return jumps up forming a pyramid with the tip of the pyramid right around the strike price of 240. The earlier you sell, the smaller the pyramid, as you can see from the other lines in the graph, which represent your selling at different dates. The earlier you sell, the worse your max gain. This goes back to our initial conversation stating that calendar spreads profit from time. Look at the pink line, which represents selling on May 1st, about 7 days earlier than our expiration. As you can see, even if Apple is at our maximum gain point of $240 a share, our profit if we were to sell that early is $452. Not bad, but not the $1,091 you would get by waiting 7 more days and hoping Apple closes around the same price. On a final note about this strategy, in this video, we based our entire strategy and our entire tutorial on closing the entire portion on May 8th the expiration date for the front month portion. If you were to allow that position to close, but kept the back month open, the scenario would change quite drastically. We don't have the time to explain all that in this video, but understand that this tutorial is based on you closing the entire position on the front month expiration date. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed, and leave a comment telling me what you plan on using this strategy on.